talk about how do you monetize your personal brand? How do you create a personal brand that you can monetize and make some money from? Uh, I've got five tips for you on how to do that, all right? Let me know uh, where you're from. Let me know if you um, wanna build a personal brand. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I know we have people from all over the world. Hi there, Marcia. Uh, I don't understand Spanish, so you're gonna have to let me know. Hi there. Let me know. Hi there, Maggie. How are you doing, darling? Hope everything's going great for you. All right, so hey there, Lisa Ann. Say hi to me. Give me a like or a love to let me know that you can hear me and see me. And I'm going to talk about um, how do you create a personal brand that you can actually generate, you know, whether it's $1,000 a month uh, or $100,000 a month or $100,000 a year. Um, how do you generate a personal brand? What should you be thinking about when you are generating a personal brand. Hi there, F-Man, I hope you're doing great. Solange from Argentina, Luca from Italy. Hey there, nice to see you all, are you doing great? Hello, there's Solange, Argentina. F-Man, check out F-Man's art, amazing stuff. So when I was, um, you know, I've been a CEO of companies before, uh, and then I transitioned over to my own personal brand and Neurogym, um, probably about you know eight years ago or so, <clears throat> and uh, it came with uh, my, my first book called Having It All, which is right there, which became a New York Times bestseller. But one of the questions that you know I had to ask myself that if you want to develop a personal brand, I've got some notes for you. My team will put um, the information across the um, the screen in some places. I'm streaming right now on Instagram, on uh, YouTube, and on my Facebook fan page. Um, but when you're thinking about a personal brand, are there any personal brands that you really resonate with? If they are, type them in right now. I want to I wanna make a couple of points around personal brands, right? There's company brands, but then there's personal brands. And I happen to have two different brands. One is for my Neurogym, okay, my company. The other one is me personally. Um, and so are there any brands, personal brands that you really like? And uh, I'm gonna show you a couple things that every one of these personal brands have in common. And uh, do you wanna monetize or make money from your personal brand? Coach Venayak, what is personal brand? Um, Nancy, you need to look that up. Uh, so personal brand is what does your brand stand for? Who, if you think about Nike, that's a brand, what does it stand for, right? Hi Mahesh, hi there Erlen, right? So Oprah, so Oprah, what does Oprah stand for, right? Whenever you're looking at a personal brand, the personal brand has an identity, right? Is the identity, think about a clothing line that you like to buy, whether it's shirts, blouses, jackets, a certain car, Okay, what kind of car do you drive? The car that you drive has a brand and that brand represents something, right? And so one of the first things you have to ask yourself, hi there, Allison, nice to have you in here, right? One of the things that you have to ask yourself and be deliberate about is uh, Aston Martin, Jurgen. yeah, great brand. Uh, new CEO there, by the way, I was just looking at the DB11s. Uh, so. Every single brand has an identity, and the identity comes with it, you know, a certain color, uh, a certain way of being. An identity means something to people, right? So when you are thinking about you as your personal brand, what is the identity of your brand, right? Is it, uh, is it Mercedes-Benz or Volkswagen? Is it uh, Adidas or Nike? You know, is it uh, bright colors or dull colors? Every brand has an identity and you have to choose, okay, when you are building your personal brand, an identity that resonates with who you are. When you're a personal brand, you have to be an authentic you. And so in order for your brand to show up as you, okay, what does your brand say about you? So. Here, is a couple, here are a couple of questions that you may consider. Uh, many of you have followed my work for quite some time. Would you agree that there's a consistent theme 
about what I teach and how I teach it, right? Is there a consistent theme around mindset, around skill set, and around action set? Do you notice that if you followed my work, you know, for a year or two or three or four, you know, I specialize on the neuroscience and neuropsychology of success. That's my theme, my underlying theme. If you've noticed, another part of my brand is consistency, right? So I show up Tuesdays, every Tuesday, right here at nine o'clock um, Pacific time, which is San Diego, right? So when you are thinking about your personal brand, I want you to take out a sheet of paper and I want you to write down what does your personal brand look like? If you take a look at, you know, my book, you know, Inner Size, okay? My newest best-selling book, not, not the answer, but Inner Size. If you take a look at having it all, if you take a look at the colors, you know, in my office on the wall, right? Look at that, the colors on the wall. If you take a look at the colors you know, of my company, Neurogym, there's a consistency of colors, right? Right, there's a consistency of colors. And so one of the things that you have to understand when you're developing a personal brand is you're, you're developing coherence in somebody's brain around your colors, your theme, what you stand for, what you're all about. And so the first thing to consider when you're developing your personal brand is first to define what is your personal brand. So let me ask you a question. Hi there, Laura. Um, what does your personal brand mean? If your brand had a color, what would be your color? Type it in the chat right now. If your brand had a color, what would be your color? My primary color, I love purple. I just love purple and I love blues. So what does your brand color, okay, say about you. Do you have a personal brand color? All right, so I want you to, to say that. So that's number one. So David Barron's, yours is green, pink and white, Speak Valley is black, blue and gray, right? Green, yellow, and white. So here's one of the first things you do. On every one, so, so point number one uh, that I wanna make um, is that, that you have to create your brand. Point number two around building your personal brand so you can monetize it. I'm gonna to get to the money part in just a minute. Part number two is consistency across all of your assets. So your business card, your landing pages, your ads, everything that you can do Create that brand awareness and those colors and tie it into your name. Why? Well, there's something about our brain that creates associations. So when you see my face and you see the colors of my books and you see the colors on my wall and you see you know, our ads or our free content or videos, there's a consistent theme around colors and our brain makes that connection across all the channels. So when you're building your personal brand, be thoughtful around what is your personal brand stand for, then what are the colors? There could be sounds, there's a lot of sounds. Companies use um, sounds, all right, to add to the color scheme, to add to the theme. So when we are creating any type of uh, messaging, we want there to be something that we call uh, banner to buyer consistency. Banner to buyer consistency, which actually is gonna be the fourth point, so I'll come back to that in just a moment. So I see all of your colors. Um, yeah, when people, when people, um, our brain takes snapshots, obviously, in a, in, you know, um, for, to create cells of recognition. And when our brain sees consistent colors over and over and over again, it makes the associations and every single color means something different to, uh, to somebody else. So I'm always looking for consistency uh, around all of my content. Does that make sense to you? If it makes sense, just tell me, John, that makes total sense. 
So, so far we have, you know, define what your brand stands for. If your brand could speak, what would your brand say about you, right? If your brand could speak, what would your brand say about you? Is your brand fast? Is your brand slow? Is your brand laxy, daisical, where it's just, hey, just free flow, bohemian, you know, or is it more, you know, um, more sharp edges? Um, so you have to think about this. And if you're looking to build a personal brand, if you're looking to build a personal brand, then you need to think about what does my brand stand for? What do I want people to think and feel about my personal brand so that I own some space, okay, in their brain? So let me ask you a question. Let's have a little bit of fun. When I share with you um, the personal brand, Oprah, what do you feel about the brand? What do you feel about the brand? Is it a brand that you trust? Is it a brand that is fast or calm? Like what do you feel when you hear the word Oprah? Or what do you feel when you hear the, you know, the, um, the brand Elon Musk? Right? What, do you, what does it make you feel? Because every brand develops consistency and the consistency creates a feeling and people gravitate towards how a brand makes them feel, right? Does a brand make you feel appreciated, that you can trust it, uh, that it's safe or that it's risky? Like Elon Musk is a risk taker, right? He's a different brand than Oprah. And yet he's got a huge following. He will make a comment and, you know, and cryptocurrency goes through the roof, right? So what does your brand stand for? Type in the chat right now. What do you believe your personal brand stands for right now? All right. And is it the brand that you want? Is your brand scattered or is your brand coherent? Which one? Is it it, you know, is it, is it fast paced or slow paced or do you not have a brand? So define what your brand stands for and then create content, okay, that is consistent across all the channels. So color, audio, video, language patterns. I always come back to neuroscience, right? I always come back to what my brand, my business brand, myneurogym.com, neurogym, and my personal brand. We always bring it back to neuroscience and neuropsychology because I wanna play at the highest level, okay, of evidence-based material. So, Lisa, I like that. My personal brand, Teal, health, wellness, spiritual, calm, slow, paced, right? So also, Lisa, for you specifically, uh, is it evidence-based, right? Is it metaphysical or is it evidence-based, all right? So now, I, I want to continue on uh, on point number two. Thank you, Allison. So on point number two on consistent content, then the question is, where are you showing up with your brand? So I'll give you an example. Right now, uh, right over here, I'm on Instagram and on my uh, computer, I'm also streaming on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. So the three different locations that I'm streaming my Achieve Even More show is going on three different locations right now, but I want the brand to be consistent, right? Does that make sense? And for those of you who are interested in streaming, I use a, a tool called StreamYard, and there's also RE, RE Stream for those of you who like to stream to different places. So you've gotta be consistent with your message, your colors across all the platforms. So then, I'm gonna shift over into how do you create, um, and the topic for, you know, for today's session is uh, five things you can do to build an income producing brand. Uh, question for you, do you wanna make more money with your brand? Do you wanna make more money with your brand? One of my uh, top students that, that started working with me privately uh, several years ago, his name is Mark Lack. Uh, he was um, a paintball, expert. He played at the highest level of paintball in the world. You know the paint guns? Um, he was one of the best in the world. And he wanted to, to um, get into the world of coaching and, and helping other people, but he didn't have a lot of experience. So one of the strategies we came up for him was 
to make sure that he, uh, he had consistency across all of his platforms. But he started off with a book uh, and then he started getting really, really good at making money online. And he got so good, he went from an idea to making over $700,000 every month right now, every month. Why? Because he started to build a brand and then he started teaching people about how to build a brand and how to make an extra 5,000 or $10,000 or $100,000 a month. Would you like to learn? Um, something that he's gonna do for me and my audience on Thursday is he is going to actually teach a class on how he built his personal brand and how to make money online. So if you want to learn, let me know. Uh, I, can you guys get the link ready? I'll have my team put a link in. It's a free event on Thursday that you can learn from a guy who went from being uh, terrible in school to being an amazing online marketer, building a personal brand. His name is Mark Lack. Um, and he wrote a book called Shorten the Gap. And then he starts to make a lot of money and then starts to teach people how to make a lot of money. So um, if he, he's only like 32 years young, like, you know, I'm like, I'm 59, he's 32, he's making a fortune. So my team will put up a link, um, if you like, in the chat on Instagram, also near my bio. So he's gonna teach a master class and he is a master of it in a very short period of time. Uh, you can sign up for free. Uh, follow him, listen to what he's got to say. So let's get back to, to the um, to, uh, uh, five things you can do to build an income producing brand. Whenever you're building a brand, you have a couple of options, right? Number one is if you have a budget, money to spend, then sure you can do Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, YouTube advertising, Pinterest advertising, TikTok. There's a lot of different ways to do direct to prospects. But the other way for many people to get started is to do free stuff. Do you know what it took me to get, um, you know, to get on Instagram this morning or StreamYard? Like three or four clicks. Did I prepare? Of course I prepared, but I, I prepared what I wanna to talk to you about. You know, I wrote down Okay, the, the five points that I want to cover with you today, and I want to give you incredible content to do a couple of things. So the number one thing that you want to do when you are building a personal brand, what do you think that is? I'm going to tell you in just a second, but what do you think the number one key is when you are building a personal brand? Can anybody guess? Type it in. Let me see how on point you all are. Right, how on point, so great mentor, five points. Hi, Asadi from Iran. What do you think is the number one thing that you have to focus on when you are building a personal brand? So Zareen, Zarina Art, tips, eh, we'll get to tips in just a moment. Neil, organic, organic what? So um, Jamika, hi Jamika, way to stay consistent Jamika. I love that you're walking every day, right? So what do you think the number one thing is? Come on, nobody's got it yet. Authenticity, sure, consistency, sure. Figure out your target market, sure. Uh, but, but your image, Nancy. Um, connection, the soul cause, bonjour, hello. Come on, what's the number one thing that we want as human beings? And I want you to think about your brain. I'm gonna come back to the brain. What is our number one priority in our brain? Safety and security, right? The number two priority is avoidance of pain or discomfort. So in order for yours and my brain to feel safe and secure with a personal brand, do we have to develop trust and rapport first? Do we have to develop trust and rapport first? If I don't trust you and I don't have any rapport with you, I will not pay attention to your brand. So, hey, Philip, right? So I have to come up with a way to build trust and rapport first before I do anything else. So how can I, how can you build trust and rapport with people who don't know you or like you or trust you yet. So how can you build trust and rapport first? 
All right, how do you build trust and rapport first? And the answer is, come on, I'm reading all your comments. Give away some of your expertise. Give away some of your knowledge. Give away some of your best stuff. Thank you, Victor John. Give away your, your techniques, your tools, your advice. And so here's my question for you. How can you, and ace mantra or as mantra, how can you give away stuff to people who need what you have? So think about your brand and ask yourself, the people who may want to buy my products or my services, my knowledge, my skills, what is it that I could give the people that need some help right now? So can you give them tools, tips, techniques? Can you do Q&A sessions to answer their questions? Can you give them infographics? Can you give them videos? Can you give them something written? Can you give them something to make them feel like they like you, trust you, and they want maybe want to do business with you? So you have to make, let me just make sure I use the right word. You have to create the environment of trust and rapport. I, I do free sessions every Tuesday here, taking what I've learned over 40 years of building companies, over 40 years of successes and failures, over 40 years of investing millions of dollars, whether it's in marketing, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, in marketing and sales over 40 years. Um, I give away a lot of free stuff, whether it's on my YouTube channel, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, um, on Facebook, wherever it is. I give away a lot of free stuff. There's some people here that have never been on one of my live sessions. There's other people that have followed me for quite some time. I just keep giving away a lot of free stuff to build trust and rapport and to help people. And then people say, huh, uh, what else do you have? So what can you do to help people develop trust and rapport? When I wrote my New York Times bestselling book, The Answer, um, people thought I was crazy in giving uh, all of what I gave in that book on how to build a business. And I said, listen, people will read the book. They'll get a sense that I know what I'm talking about. Maybe they'll want something else that I have, maybe some of our programs. So you've got to create an environment of trust and rapport. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> Right, so give away some of your expertise and your best stuff. Do you like when you're in a, in a shopping center and you're walking and somebody gives you a, you know, a taste of an ice cream or a taste of some berries or a taste of their pizza or something? Like, and if you like it, don't you like see, well, maybe I should have lunch here or breakfast or dinner, right? So they're giving you an experience in advance. So don't be afraid to give away some of your best stuff, all right? So great, David says, your book brought me to all of your, all of my programs, great marketing. Thank you, David, right? So here is um, a couple more things. And by the way, as I, as I mentioned, if you wanna learn from one of my top students who's done this brilliantly, he's making over $700,000 a month, um, hop on to the training on Thursday. My team will put links for you with Mark Lack. He's a brilliant young guy and just gives and gives and gives and gives and gives and gives and gives. And gives and therefore he has a lot more. The law of attraction, for those of you that are into the law of attraction, is the more you give, right, the more you attract back to you. So think about that. So um, that, there's Mark Lack's thing. So number four, I mentioned uh, earlier, and I've got about five minutes, six minutes to, uh, to go through two more points. Number four is something that I see is one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make and that is inconsistency. So they might do something, you know, one time, um, but there's no consistency between their banner to their buyer. What does that mean? Do you understand the term banner to buyer? So let's say you have some free stuff here. And let's say, you know, you're talking about, um, I don't know, Ginzu knives, but then over here you're trying to sell 
okay, um, uh, siding for a house. There, there has to be a banner to buyer consistency around what it is that you are doing and offering. So if you're gonna be talking, okay, let's say I'm talking about you know personal branding to build an income producing business. If I was to all of a sudden say to you, hey, uh, does anybody wanna to go to Egypt with me? Okay, to look at the pyramids? You'd be scratching your head going, why was he talking about branding and then asked me to go to Egypt? If I wanted to take you to Egypt, I'd be talking about you know, the great pyramids and the mystical, um, you know, um, uh, theme around that, and then maybe say that. So whenever you are building your brand, make sure that you're creating, banner means uh, any content that you put out, whether it's videos, ads, infographics, or anything else, right? Make sure that there is consistency all the way through to what you might be offering somebody. If you don't, you create brand confusion. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? So you wanna stand for something and you wanna create consistency. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have different product lines. So I'll give you an example. I have a winning the game of business program. I also have a winning the game of weight loss program. But I wouldn't be talking to business owners about business growth and then say, do you want to look at my winning game of weight loss program? If I was doing a session on weight loss or what I prefer to call weight release and the science and the evidence of why people um, uh, lose weight and gain weight, then it would make logical sense to offer a weight loss program. So make sure that you have banner to buyer consistency across every one of your channels. Does that make sense? Don't be doing one thing one day and another thing the other day and another thing the other day and another thing the other day. Does that make sense? Give me a John that makes totally set of total sense. Sherry Cameron, you're right. A confused mind does not buy. Okay. And here is my my last session. And again, for those of you who just joined, I uh, highly recommend that you uh, sign up for the free training with one of my top students, Mark Lack. On, uh, on monetizing your brand. He is just just amazing. He'll be doing that on Thursday. I'll probably be going for about you know an hour and a half or so on branding and monetizing the way he does and how you're going from zero to $700,000 a month in sales. So here is number five. Okay, imagine that you have a product or a service and imagine that somebody, you know, is a built, you've built trust and rapport with somebody and you're at the point, and they're at the point where they're ready to buy. Have you thought this deeply about this next step? Creating irresistible offers. Creating irresistible offers. What does that mean? Well, it means that your greatest cost of acquiring a new customer is the first sale. And so have you considered that you can afford to create an irresistible offer to get people in to buy your first product or service? Now, whenever we are dealing with creating irresistible offers, let's say you're selling a pen, okay? You're selling a pen, okay? Well, you can sell the pen, let's say for a dollar, right? But what if you sold the pen and in addition to the pen, when you buy it right now, you also get three videos on how to be a better writer. Three videos on how to take ideas from your head and craft them in such a way that people will be drawn to what you write. Now, a pen can be sold as a commodity or you can create an irresistible offer by saying, not only am I gonna give you the pen, but here are some added value things that you can use or need, all right, when you buy my pen. Now, why would you do that? Can you imagine why you would do that? Well, the hardest sale is the first one. And here's the thing that I want you to remember. When you trust a brand, and when the brand has a product or a service that meets or exceeds your expectations, do you continue to buy from that brand? 
If the brand exceeds or meets your expectation, do you buy more from that brand? Chances are you do. So what does that mean? It means that all of the time and energy and money that you spent to acquire that new customer, you don't have to pay for that acquisition cost. So when, okay, when you acquire a customer and you deliver or over deliver, not only do they keep coming to buy from you, but chances are when they are so happy with what you've done for them, don't you tell your friends or your family? So now we have repeat business and we have referrals, both of which cost almost no more money. Does that make sense? So, so far, if we can put the five back up, Andrea. So let me just give a recap. Number one is define what your brand stands for. Number two, create consistency across all of your channels. Number three, offer a whole bunch of free stuff, whether it's Q and A's, free samples, etc. Number four, make sure that you create banner to buyer consistency. And number five, create irresistible offers, okay, to create, to gain the first sale. Those are a few keys that if you follow, which I hope you will, you can watch this again. By the way, if you like this, do you mind sharing this? Um, if you like what I'm doing, share this. Come back next Tuesday as well. Uh, if you wanna pick up any of my New York Times best-selling books, I've got The Answer, Having It All, uh, Inner Size to, to uh, Maximize Your Brain's Personal Power. And um, if you want to learn more about some awesome branding to monetize, to make a lot of money online, uh, sign up for uh, Mark Lacks, one of my top students, exclusive training. Uh, my team will put a link for you. Uh, he'll blow your mind on how he makes 700 plus thousand dollars every single month. All right, I gotta jump. Thank you for joining my Achieve Even More show. If you enjoyed this, pass it on um, and uh, keep coming back and consume more knowledge and skills. Be in the environment uh, of success and you will be having some awesome, awesome results in your life. How about a high five? Boom, 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 boom. I appreciate you, have an awesome day. Hey there, Mr. Mark. Mark Lax in the house on Instagram right now. Uh, he's a rock star, all right? So awesome, everyone. Have a great day, I appreciate you. And the links to uh, sign up for Mark's free training masterclass on Thursday uh, will be in the links uh, or in my bio. Um, blow you away, I guarantee you. All right, bye everyone.